You may recall earlier this year, we took you to the St. Petersburg waterfront for a brief look at the collaborative effort on the part of Douglas L. Jamerson Elementary and St. Petersburg High School students. It resulted in a brilliant display of some of St. Petersburg's grand history. We thought we'd expand upon that presentation today with a closer look at the murals and the role each depiction plays as we look back over decades of time. Ru Farias is our host. Well, a couple years ago, we actually had uh, Darryl, Derek Donnelly, one of the local mural artists, paint a mural on, our, on the side of our wall uh, of an iconic St. Petersburg postcard. And we had uh, some students from throughout Pinellas County do a little children's wall on our lower wall. So we decided we wanted to change it up a little bit. And uh, we talked about what kind of imagery we'd like. And we decided we want to tell a story of St. Pete through art. So uh, we, we talked to uh, Jenny Trewin at St. Pete High, who contacted some of the kids at Jamerson Elementary as well. And they brought, she, so she brought out St. Pete High artists, students, and uh, Jamerson students, went through postcard after postcard, picked out the right images, and they started painting. Well, this, this image here is Mr. Sun. Uh, he, he was brought to St. Petersburg uh, by a local uh, photographer and became, it was adopted by the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce. So probably for about 60 years now, that, that has been one of the iconic uh, advertising images of St. Petersburg. And, it, and it's followed by the train. Um, St. Petersburg became St. Petersburg uh, uh, when Peter Demens brought the Orange Belt Railway into, into uh, what was at that time Wardsville. So on June 8th, 1888, the Orange Belt Railway arrived with a locomotive called the Matty. And from that point forward, we grew as a city and became St. Petersburg. And of course, our, one of our first known is the Mirror Lake Library. Um, it, it was actually built with Carnegie money uh, when, when Carnegie gave the millions of dollars uh, to, to further education and build libraries in communities that didn't have libraries. We received part of that money uh, and it just celebrated its centennial last year, so it's 101 years old. The open air post office, uh, this was a model post office, it was the first one built like this in the country. Um, and there was a lot of people involved, a lot of business leaders to help raise the money to buy the land and build this post office. And it just celebrated its, its centennial as well. And it's still in operation on the corner of 4th Street and Central, uh, 1st Avenue North as an actual post office. The Serena Hotel uh, was our first million dollar hotel built in St. Petersburg. Um, it was probably the granddaddy of all our hotels until the Vinoy was built. Um, then in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, was actually imploded uh, uh, to make room. I mean, it used to be located on, on Beach Drive. And of course, our world famous shuffleboard courts. Um, it's the world's, we are the world largest shuffle, shuffleboard club. And uh, for years, uh, that whole area around Mirror Lake, whether it was shuffleboard, chess, checkers, lawn bowling, um, it was kind of our, our sports recreational location for people and all the things were outdoors, even the checkers club and the chess club, everybody played uh, outside because of our wonderful weather here in, in the winter time. Um, and it's had this great resurgence, it's pretty hip now. I mean, if you ever go there on Friday night, they have Friday night shuffle and the place is packed. The Coliseum opened in 1926 and it was uh, basically a big band jazz dance hall. Um, there were a number of them built like it around the country. From my understanding, I think there's only two of them that survive, and we have one of them. Um, this is kind of like the Amelie Arena of the day. Anybody that was anyone in the music world, uh, when they came in concert, always performed at the Coliseum. A lot of famous blues and jazz acts, and of course the, the big band acts that, that went there you know, from the 1920s on. And of course, good old St. Petersburg High School. And this is actually the third location for St. Pete High. This is the current location, the building that is on Fifth Avenue North, uh, and it also opened in 1926. The 1920s was what probably our largest, until today, our largest economic boom period, and the, the growth of construction was amazing. And when this school was built, it was known as the Million Dollar High School because it was our first school that cost a million dollars to build, and the state of Florida couldn't understand why we wanted to build this school way out in the middle of farms out there on Fifth Avenue and uh, 25th Street, but there it sits. It opened in 1926. And then, of course, the Million Dollar Pier. Uh, this also opened in 1926. 
Um, we had a number of piers throughout our history. Uh, the original purpose or the original desire of St. Petersburg was to be a port city. And that's why Peter de Menz decided to bring the railroad here because uh, they were going to construct a number of piers onto Tampa Bay and turn this into a huge shipping port facility, basically. Luckily, uh, when William Straub came to St. Petersburg and bought the St. Pete Times, he convinced the city council that we didn't need to be Tampa or any other port city. We needed to be this amazing, beautiful, park-filled recreational city. This pier was built, uh, the hurricane of 1921 pretty much destroyed the waterfront. That was the last time we had a direct hit here. And uh, the piers prior to this were all wooden. This was a, a concrete pier that was built and the Spanish style building uh, is what we became famous for, the architecture of Mediterranean Revival. And it was, like I said, opened in 1926. It survived until 1967 when the actual building was torn down. In 1972, the inverted pyramid was built on that same spot. And just a few years ago, the entire structure, the inverted pyramid and the pier itself uh, was demolished to make room for the new uh, St. Pete Pier that's supposed to open in the fall of 2019. And here we go. This is the, uh, the, the grand lady of, of downtown St. Petersburg, the Vinoy Hotel. Uh, Amir Vinoy Lofner um, built this hotel. It actually opened on December 31st, 1925. He wanted it to open for New Year's Eve. They had this great, huge celebration, and it sat uh, at the edge of our waterfront for years as our premier hotel. Went through some rough times, like all of downtown St. Petersburg did in the 1970s and 80s. Um, and then luckily uh, was saved and refurbished and remodeled to the amazing hotel that it is today. This structure uh, is, is known as the Snell Building or the Snell Tower. Perry Snell uh, bought this corner. Uh, it was owned by a realtor by the name of Noel Mitchell, who was one of our former mayors. Um, and he uh, tore down the building that was originally there and built this structure. At the time that it was built in the 1920s, it was the tallest building in St. Petersburg, um, and it still stands today. And if you ever go there and look at it and you stand on the sidewalk and look up, it's, the architecture is amazing. A lot of it is all hand carved stone all the way up. And the people, when they walk along the sidewalks, um, it's on the corner of Central Avenue and 4th Street, what they don't realize when they look down and they see glass blocks is that this building has a basement under the entire uh, building. And at night when the basement is lit up, the light shines through the blocks onto the sidewalk, so illuminates the sidewalk. And it still has one of the few arcades that are left. The Snell Arcade cuts through the middle of the building connecting Central Avenue with the alley um, to the north of it. And that arcade alone was just a masterpiece of art. Perry Snell spent nearly a million dollars bringing in everything from Cuban tile, Italian tile, beautiful mosaic of Venice, um, all kinds of uh, different statuary from Italy. And it, it itself was almost like an art museum walking through um, the arcade. Now we have anybody that lived in St. Petersburg prior to 1980 remembers Web City. Uh, Webb City uh, was a dream. A guy by the name of James Earl Doc Webb moved to St. Petersburg in 1926, opened up a little drugstore, continued to expand it, and he was a marketing genius. He was way ahead of his time and, and nearly everything that he did. He went from a little drugstore to a shopping and entertainment mecca that was about seven square blocks of, of the city, from 9th Street all the way uh, to about 5th and 6th Street, and from 2nd Avenue, um, south to about Fifth Avenue South. It, it had a, a parking lots, it had 77 different stores. It was a mall before anybody knew what a mall was. And of course it was famous for its live mermaid show and dancing chickens which were on the fourth floor that entertained everybody for years here in St. Petersburg. We talked about the Million Dollar Pier earlier. This is the structure that was built uh, to replace it in 1972. And the actual original structure, people, people remember the inverted pyramid before it was knocked down and it had a bunch of retail on the ground level. The original structure didn't have that and the reason of its design was so you could, it was modern for obviously for, for that time period, the early 1970s, but you could stand on the waterfront and literally look through the building and still see the water. That's why it was designed in, in, in that nature. And of course we have the TROP, um, home of the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, and it, uh, it, the structure has sat there, for, well, the rays have been here for 25 years-ish. Um, 
in on the old gas plant area, uh, and hopefully it'll still be there for a few more years for the baseball team. And of course, the yeah, the Sunshine Skyway, and this is, this bridge is magnificent to drive over. It's more magnificent to look at at night, the way that it's lit. Um, it is not the first Sunshine Skyway. Uh, there was this, uh, the original Sunshine Skyway um, was struck by a freighter in 1980, uh, and it took down part of the main span. So the uh, the decision was made to build a new bridge, a new modern bridge that could be better protected from um, from ships. That was a little higher as well, and uh, it was uh, when it was constructed, it, it it was not only this magnificent bridge, but also like a modern piece of art used in architecture. It's very beautiful to see this bridge. Well, you can't go anywhere in St. Petersburg, especially along the downtown waterfront, without seeing our pelicans, our brown pelicans, the, the, the official bird of St. Petersburg. Um, they're a mainstay here along the waterfront and on all the pilings and on the, what was the Million Dollar Pier, soon be the St. Pete Pier. Um, anywhere you see our advertising, even all the new, hip, uh, kind of retro -y kind of things that people are doing with t-shirts and stuff like that. I mean, you know, th this, this has been our image, this pelican, which we, we hold dear here to our hearts in St. Pete. We've been sharing, you know, the, the story of the Sunshine City for 96 years here at the Museum of History, and uh, this has been a really cool way to share the story of our history. That's it for now. We hope you've enjoyed our program and we invite you to join us on our next Spectrum of the Arts. I'm Jonathan Ogle, we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Jonathan Ogle. I'd like to invite you to join us for our next Spectrum of the Arts show. We'll take you to a pair of visual and digital arts camps to see what some of the referendum funding is doing for Pinellas County School students. We'll also take you to downtown St. Petersburg to see the work of St. Petersburg High and Jamerson Elementary School students who turned a Museum of History wall into a thing of beauty. Join us for our next Spectrum of the Arts. Check our website, www.wpds.tv for time and dates.